aldehydes and ketones. An aldehyde is defined as an R group with a CHO. A ketone is an R2 group attached to a CO. It will always be that proton that determines the difference between these two. It seems simple here, but when you are looking at molecules, it is very easy to get confused. So as a standard, just start with the double bonded oxygen. If the carbon has an H with it, it's an aldehyde. If it doesn't have an H on it, it's a ketone. Now just make a note that in organic chemistry, I don't often call hydrogen as hydrogen. Generally, it's referred to as a proton. Every book is a little different, so it just depends on who your author is. Here I have two examples. And here you can see that the aldehyde is a CHO, and that the acetone is a C double bond, and there's no protons attached, so there's nothing there. And now for the naming part. When naming these, you start from the carbon with the double bonded O on it. You name it as you would any normal alkane, but you refer to the carbon chain, aldehydes, as al. If it's a ring structure, you call it a carb aldehyde. And this is where organic chemistry gets fun, because naming situations can sometimes end with anal. So here you have ethanol, propanol, and cyclohexane carb aldehyde. When the CHO is attached to the ring, it's a carbaldehyde. When it's a straight chain, you just name it with al. So here is two, a two carbon piece, one, two, M, E, so ethanol, but you would name it ethanol. Now for the ketones. The ketones will end in O-N-E, or own. Number the parent chains to get the smallest locant numbers from the carbonyl carbon. You can use the older or newer naming conventions for these. I prefer the older IUPAC, but you can use the newer ones, and even some of the common names are generally used. So here's an example of three hexanone, or hexanon, you'll hear it pronounced differently depending on where you are, but you would start from this carbon as your number one carbon, because it's closest to the double bonded O. And this is a ketone, because it's just a double bonded O, and you can see there's no H attached here. So one, two, three, hexanone. Over here on the right side, you have 4-hexene, 2-ohn, which is the older IUPAC way of naming things, and on this side you have the newer way of naming things as hex-4-ene, 2-ohn. And again, on this one, you're going to start from the right side because this is the side that's closest to the double bonded oxygen. And that's how you name those. If the first carbonyl is on the first carbon, you don't need to name it as a 1 when you write the first name. It will be assumed that it's the first carbon. So here you have butanol, that should be, a, actually that's butane, and then on the right you have butanol, and that's butanol, not but anal, depending on, on the book, just be sure you name it correctly. Now I chose problems from different texts from lecture and from lecture. I'll explain these out to you, and if you feel like you're beating a dead horse by the end of the video, then pay extra close attention. If you don't review these over and over, you will forget naming procedures. And with organic chem, you need to beat that dead horse until the collision creates a Higgs boson. So moving on, problem 19.1. Letter A, you have three, I'm sorry, two methyl three pentanone. You number from the right because that gives the carbonyl the lowest locant number. The rest is just named conventionally. It's a five carbon chain as a pentane. So you can see I named I numbered the carbons one, two, three, four, five, with three being closest. Well, one, two, three. It would be three from either side, but you have another substituent, so you want to name it from the right because that would give both of them the lowest locant number. Moving on, let's see if I can scroll down. Here we go, B. So on B, you have 3-phenylpropanol, and that's 3-phenylpropanol, not propanol. There are more carbons in the chain than the subgroup. However, this is an aldehyde, so you name the parent chain as the longest chain containing the double bonded O. It's only a carbaldehyde when the CHO group is attached directly to the ring. Otherwise, you would name the chain with the ring as a subgroup, thus the phenyl. So 3-phenylpropanol. Now C, I drew it in skeletal structure just to save time. If you enjoy writing out all those C's and H's, be my guest. And this one is a simple chain. Just remember to number from the lowest locant. In this case, it's the locant on the left, 2-6-octadione. And you can use the dione, trione, 
etc. as you get into the bigger, more complicated molecules, but generally at this level you won't be doing anything like that until grad school, hopefully. Now, letter D, remember to look at your earlier chapters on this one. The subgroups are in a trans position, meaning that if the benzene ring is flat like paper, they are on different sides of the plane, or in other words, they are on different sides of the ring, one above the page, one below the page. The CHO group is attached to the ring, so this is an actual aldehyde, and this is named trans 2 methyl cyclohexane carbaldehyde. See? This is what I mean about beating a dead horse in organic. You will always need everything from the previous chapters. Letter E is for hexenal. Be careful naming this one out loud, not to confuse it with hexanol. It's hexenal. Al is an Albert. Some places will pronounce it differently. And that really doesn't matter, just be sure to remember to differentiate it from the alcohols when you're giving the information. Since the double bonded O is on the first carbon, there is no need to name it with a 1. So 4 hexenal and F. This one is really tricky. Just remember that an aldehyde is only an aldehyde if the CHO group is attached to a ring as a subgroup. This ring has a double bonded O right on it, so it's a ketone, not an aldehyde. The subgroups are on the same side of the plane, so this is cis. This will be named as cis 2 5 dimethyl cyclohexane, naming this guy, whoops, naming this guy as your number one carbon. So you should also be able to go the other way. On exams, you may be given names and expected to draw the molecule. If you're given something like 3 methyl butanol, you should start immediately with the parent chain. You know that but means four carbons long, and al ending means that a CHO is attached right to the first carbon. Lastly, you know that a methyl group is attached to the third carbon. So always start with the parent chain and work backwards. So this is what 3 methyl butane al will look like. And here is one that's more challenging. First, you're going to name the parent chain. Remember to name the longest chain, giving oxygen the lowest locant. Secondly, name the subgroups. Give them locants if they need it. Thirdly, name the subgroups alphabetically. Just arrange them on your paper. And fourthly, recognize any chiral. Fourthly, is that even a word? Uh, recognize that there's any chiral sensors and acknowledge it in the name. So this would be four. I'm sorry. This would be R six ethyl. 4, 4, dimethyl, 3, non-unknown. You'll get more complex like ones like this on exams for sure. Just be really careful to follow your steps of 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And that's all I have for you for this video. If you have any other questions, inbox me. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to be awesome.